Hello, people. Um, I say people, not as a pejorative, but as an inclusive title. My name is Troy Baker. Um, I'm here to support my friend Rich. You might know him as uh, Super Beanie Man Gaming. Uh, because I support people who create things, and he's creating very cool things. Namely, this entire month is devoted to making a video about The Last of Us. So, uh, you should do all of the things you should normally do, which is like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Support. And as always, you make every shot count. That one bullshit PlayStation trophy. The put my name up trophy in The Last of Us Part 2 requires you to beat the high score in the archery game, which is a little mini game using a toy bow and arrow that you find in the aquarium in the second half of the game. So this game plays out under a time limit and you are stuck standing in a fixed position with you only being able to move the camera around to look around the room and aim at the targets. So what makes this trophy bullshit is that it's a totally dumbed down challenge with very little difficulty or skill involved, meaning you will most likely get this the first time playing without really trying. So the current high score oh, yeah, is 10, so you simply need to hit 11 targets before the time runs out to win, yeah. and the vast majority of them are pretty easy to spot throughout the room, so the challenge isn't really finding them, it's more hitting them as you can't physically move closer to them. So that right there may sound like it'd actually be a challenge, however hitting them is made even easier by the fact that all of the targets are static, so none of them are like moving back and forth or anything, forcing you to aim ahead and anticipate where the target is going. So it's just a simple case of aiming at a stationary object. And worst of all, you get unlimited ammo on the bow and bags of time so you can just spam the arrows in the direction of a faraway target and just gradually move the camera up or down after each shot until you eventually hit that target. And this, for me, just totally makes it redundant as a trophy as it's not a skilled one to earn at all as the game practically uh. hands this challenge to you on a plate. I mean, you would seriously have to go out of your way in order to not earn this trophy. <sighs> so, in terms of the actual time, limit, you get roughly 90 seconds on the clock, which equates to about 8 seconds per oh, target. And even here, on this first attempt that I had when I played the game for the where first time, that you're seeing right now, I actually thought I was about to fail the thing, as I'd only got 10 targets hit, yet where once the then? timer actually ran out, it still gave me the trophy, but wait a minute, I thought it said beat the high score, and technically here, I've only equaled Mal's 10, so I haven't actually beaten it, so why the hell did I still get the trophy? What the fuck? So if I check the description of the trophy again, in the details section it actually states to just earn the high score in the archery game. So, you I can still get 10 and, and still win it as you've equaled but not beaten the current going. high score? Oh my god, that's just Ten. bullshit. Eight, you don't even need to beat the score, even though there are clearly 11 yeah. targets in the room. I just couldn't see this one up there. Fucking hell, this is just bullshit. Way to wrap me up in Cotton Wool game. Fuck. So the put my name up trophy is thankfully just a bronze one, so at least the devs realised this wasn't really worthy of a big challenge and a silver or a gold trophy, so in that respect they got that bit right, uh, but the fact that it's just so easy to do, there's unlimited arrows, there's no punishment for just spamming loads and you get plenty of time and no moving targets, makes the put my name up trophy bullshit, giving it a bullshit trophy rating of... <laughs> It's far too easy for its own good, and that's a problem with all the trophies in this game's list. Which brings me on to the next part of this video, where I take a look at all the other trophies in the game. Welcome to that one bullshit PlayStation Platinum Unlock. So congratulations, I see you've just finished The Last of Us Part 2. I was unlocked that shiny What I Had To Do gold trophy. And 
As you sit there and you look through the rest of the trophy list, you wonder to yourself, hmm, maybe I could go and get that every last one of them platinum trophy and add The Last of Us 2 to my collection of plats. Well, I'm here to tell you whether you should just play it, plat it, or just downright avoid it. As I talk to you about the platinum journey of The Last of Us Part 2. So... It's worth noting as we start this section that Naughty Dog have done something very commendable with The Last of Us Part 2 as they strive to make the game accessible to everyone, giving us a host of accessibility options never before seen in a game, as you can do things like enable colorblind mode so things come up a lot clearer, give aim assist and loads of other difficulty adjustments so you can tailor the game to how you want it, allowing you to get through it if you're struggling or maybe you're not very good at the game or maybe you have some disability that prevents you from playing for long periods of time or whatever there's probably an option in here that will help you out greatly such as this one here that we can see this high visibility mode where the good characters are all coloured in blue, the enemies are all coloured in a bright red, and any objects, objects of interest like weapon drops or collectibles are highlighted in a bright yellowy gold colour, allowing you to easily see where things are if you may struggle with your vision or whatever. So there are a lot of nice options here and I really do praise Naughty Dog for doing this as games should be able to be played by everyone. So while I praise Naughty Dog for doing this and I hope that other devs follow suit with these options so that everyone can play games. It has sadly come at the expense of the trophies or more specifically the difficulty, skill and challenge of the trophies as this is a platinum that seems to have been designed for everyone and anyone with any sort of ability high or low can get it and while it's not at the level of easiness that you'd find in a typical telltale game where you just need to play and finish the game to get the platinum it is a much more basic and easy experience to get the platinum compared to its predecessor as that game requires you to beat it on every single difficulty level there was even online multiplayer trophies that required you to finish the journeys for each faction so there was quite a bit of a challenge in that list However, Last of Us Part 2's trophy list is pretty much all about the various collectibles that you need to pick up throughout the game, as well as finding all the weapons and getting all the upgraded points and the workbenches. You'll have to find collectibles like cards and coins, as well as seeing every site in all the locations. And there's really only one trophy for completing the game, and you can do that on any difficulty. And speaking of the collectibles, there are about 286 in the game. And on my very first playthrough, when I was just casually going through, I found 174 of them. So they're pretty easy to find. And you can even use the accessibility options to make the collectibles appear even more obvious with the gold highlight around them. And I don't want to sound like an elitist prick here, or you know, some twat who's like, oh well, it's not a very, very valuable platinum because it's so easy to obtain, so I won't get it on minus or anything like that. And I haven't actually got the platinum yet, but I am going to go through the next couple of days and get all the collectibles to get my platinum. But I just wish that they would have took that accessibility approach to the trophies in a different way instead of just making them all really easy without any sort of challenge to them they could have scaled it to cater for all sorts of players so those that wanted a challenge they could have been harder for example in that archery game if i didn't have any of those accessibility options on i think maybe the target should have been moving around the room so they were harder to hit maybe give me a smaller time limit to get them all maybe even give uh. me 10 or 20 arrows so I can't miss as many as I could with the accessibility options on. I just think that way it would have worked, you know, there would have been those options there because it is a good thing to have in a game, this accessibility stuff, so that anyone can play it. But I just wish they would have catered for those ones that did want that challenge. Uh, and I kind of feel like we, we were sort of just left out. And I think they could have done it really well there. So if I wanted the challenge, I could have made these harder for myself to unlock. And if I didn't, or if I was just someone who wanted to get them easily, I could have it. And if I was someone that would struggle to 
do the fast sort of aiming. Now I could flick on those auto assist options, I could stop all the targets from moving, and I could give myself more time and unlimited arrows and things like that. So there's there's a way for everyone to get it then as well, but you still have that challenge if you want it. And I think that's what would have worked better with this list. Sadly, however, they didn't think of that when designing the trophies with the accessibility options in mind, so we're just left with a really easy and lacklustre trophy list to get the platinum. I mean, you even get a trophy for giving Joel a hat. Yep, that's right, a hat, which basically amounts to you just pressing triangle when prompted. Even ones when you scan through the trophy list that might seem challenging upon reading them. When you actually get to them in the game, they're really easy. Just like the bow one, there's another one called Sharpshooter, which is a shooting gallery minigame where you have to beat the high score of that prick, Manny. So this one is really easy again, as because just like that one, there's no time limit. Here you have 10 shots to try and get a higher score than Manny by shooting either the red head shot or the red chest shot to get the maximum points. It's made even easier by the lack of any sort of time limit, so you can simply wait and take your time with each shot, waiting for your crosshair to go smaller so you can get the actual accurate shot. You haven't got a rush to beat Manny or anything, and he will usually get in the low 80s for his maximum score, so you've got plenty of room to be able to beat him by getting a few of those red target shots. So it's again, it's another lackluster trophy, but it's a really easy one to get. So in terms of hunting for the platinum, it's simple. Shotgun. Just like with the first okay, game's really trophy list, shotgun. Last of Us Part 2 will also require you to find all of the weapons in the game, and for the most part the majority of these are on the path you would take to get through the level, with I would only say with the shotgun and the flamethrower being an exception where you have to go off the beaten path to find them. Another trophy requires you to find all of the workbenches, which are pretty much the upgrade stations um, where you would upgrade the abilities of each weapon. And there is a trophy tied to upgrading all of the weapons. And just like the trophy that requires you to upgrade all of your character abilities with the supplements, you won't be able to do this in, an, in, a, in a single playthrough as you won't be able to get enough parts and points in order to upgrade everything. So the game does require you to do I would say maybe one and a bit okay. playthroughs in order to get enough points to be able to upgrade everything to its maximum and get those overall trophies. Like with Uncharted Strange Relic Trophy, Naughty Dog also included two special collectibles hidden in the game, namely being the Jack and Daxter Precursor Orb and Nathan Drake's ring that he wears around his neck, which you can find inside a bank vault oh, no in one of those safety deposit boxes. No these are pretty easy to find, to be fair. I found them without a guide, so you shouldn't have too much trouble with these. Providing you're actually actively searching each area, you should be okay with this. Now one of the trophies I did like was the Sightseer Trophy, which required you to visit each location in the downtown area, which was one of the, well, the only sort of area where it was just wide and open and could just let you explore at your own pace. So this happens very early on in the game when you're still with Dina and you're still on the horse and you're just free to explore this sort of district area at your own pace and there's a load of buildings around that you can explore and there's a few areas that you can't initially get to and you need to find out how you can traverse through to them. So as you're going through and you loot each of these areas, Ellie will mark them off the map one by one so you know you've looted that area and it's complete. And I really liked doing this. I spent a few hours in this location trying to get into every area to make sure I'd found everything before I moved on. So it was quite a fun and enjoyable one to do. And you would always know that you completed an area because you would see her animation scratching out the map. And it would actually come up an on-screen prompt telling you you'd completed that area. So it's quite nice to just visit every area and just see what treasures lie there or if there was enemies. And it was cool to work out how you got into certain places. Like there was this one bit where I couldn't get across a bridge because it had collapsed. But on top of the bridge, if you figured out how to get up there, there was a fire truck and you could use the hose sticking out of it to throw down off the bridge and then use it as a rope to sort of swing across to the other ledge. And on top of this ledge, there was a van that I could loot and get some items from. 
Other ones were a bit more simple, like it was just a ruined building and you could just climb up some stairs and find some loot up the top floor. <laughs> Maybe you had to smash a window to get out on an outer Maybe. ledge and walk around to the ledge. next bit. But for the most that part, they were quite the... easy. But it was just fun exploring this, this environment because I thought it was really so. it was really well designed now. and it was a nice area to just take your time with now and explore. So I'm glad they actually before. added a trophy into this. My only niggle with the trophy would be the fact that the map doesn't actually tell you every location. It only shows up as a marked location where you discover it. So there were a few bits on the map that looked like there could perhaps be another building there. So I would often waste a lot of time trying to find where this entrance was because there's a few buildings that are shown on the map. But when you get to that location, the building's just completely collapsed or there's nothing there at all. So it can be a bit confusing to figure out if you found in all of the places before you go into the final building where you trigger the story scene. The only other trophy I enjoyed unlocking in this game was the safe cracker trophy, which required you to unlock every safe in the game. So again, it's another collectible one, but this one's actually fun. So the first game had a couple of safes in it. There was one in the hotel and the code was on a little note up on the upper floor, which was just a case of going up, grabbing it, and then the, the safe would just automatically open when you went back to it and press triangle. Whereas in The Last of Us 2, these have been improved greatly and they kind of play more like the safes in Dishonored in that the clue to the code to the safe, which you have to manually enter, is found within the environment so you may find a sign on a notice board that tells you the code it may be graffitied into a toilet wall um, it may be a picture on a wall that you have to look at or there might be a note that tells you and gives you a vague clue and all of these were really fun to figure so, out. There was one where it said the employee of the month had it and it was the dog and you had to figure out the date from there and go through yeah, that way. The there was another one that Any mentioned um, the code being the name of like their, the dog. number of their apartment uh, and their neighbor apartment July number. So you had to go outside into the corridor and then look at the door numbers. There was another one that gave you part of the code on a note and it told you uh, that it was the this girl called Stacy's phone number but you didn't have the last two digits but if you had walked into the uh, nearby so toilets you would see some graffiti on the wall that said uh, for a good so time ring Stacy on this number and that would give you the whole code <laughs> yeah. and they were just really fun to <laughs> figure bad, out man. and I they, always well, enjoyed when I found one because well, I knew I was in for some everybody. fun time oh, trying yeah, to figure cool. out the solution like and I think they worked a lot yeah, better like best of all as well which I thought was pretty cool you can actually do them manually if you just take your time to go through every single number you will hear a slightly different clicking sound when you land on the correct number for that section of the code. And I just thought that was really cool because that's how I solved the one with the Stacy's phone number. I just slowly went through and heard the, the correct click on the final number that I needed. So this one was a really cool one to do. So aside from those more unique trophies, the rest of your time spent working towards the Platinum will just be on the various collectibles in the game. So as Ellie, you will need to find a load of the superhero sort of top trumps cards that are scattered around the environment. There are quite a lot of these in each of her chapters. And Abby has her own unique collectibles in the form of coins that you also have to find scattered around the lands. Then there are the workbenches, which we've mentioned before. There are also the journal and documents that you have yeah, to find. So there's the usual notes and, and files that are scattered around. Um, and at so times, Ellie will also write things good. in her journal. But for the most part, these collectibles are fairly easy to find. And you can also go back and use chapter select to find them. And thankfully, it will keep a track of all the ones that you've found. So you can easily go through each chapter in each of the levels in that chapter to see exactly what you're actually missing. So it's quite easy to just jump into the chapter you need, grab the collectible and then exit that chapter. But be warned when you're doing this, you need to make sure you don't okay, delete your at, yes. final save file. So make a manual save on the very last oh, mission so you've always got that to reload. Because if you were no, to jump into say back. chapter 3 and get collectibles in there and oh, then come no, out, no. you'll find that all oh, the no, later no, chapters are then locked thing. out. So you can't actually jump back and Excellent. forward. So you need to always reload your main save, which is a bit <laughs> annoying because you didn't have to do that in the first game. That's cool. 
So all in all, the Platinum Trophy journey for The Last of Us 2 is a fairly straightforward, easy, and a little dull one, to be honest, in my opinion, as it's not a very challenging Platinum for you to go for, as, say for completing the game and then those couple of more unique trophies, the vast majority of time spent getting the Platinum will require you to just simply get and collect all of the game's various collectibles, from the coins to the cards to all of the guns and all of the upgrades oh God, the majority of your time will just be what spent replaying fuck? levels to hunt oh down man, all of these collectibles and if you're not prepared to use the accessibility options to make it easier for you to find them because you can also upgrade the listen mode so it can oh ping man. out further oh man, so you can oh highlight man, the man. collectibles easier you're going to be spending the majority of your time using an online guide to find all of these collectibles and that's a never fun thing Thing to do in this sorry, these sort Dougie. of games sorry. so sorry, for man. me it's not as good as a platinum as the first game as that one while the list wasn't that great to begin there. with it was still a challenging one to complete oh, it on no, survivor and hard modes whereas here that challenge is gone because you can just complete this on any mode Thankfully, I completed it on hard for my man, first go dogs, through, man, so I did have some God, challenge, boy, but for most people just wanting Holy to get a quick shit. platinum, you can just oh do this God. on the easiest difficulty. <laughs> it's not going to affect anything. Oh, so that's pretty much the, the platinum journey for, for The Last of Us Part 2 in a nutshell. Oh, yes. So now it's time to just yes, give it my there. final rating. Should you platinum it? Should you just oh, play it? Or should you just shuffle. downright avoid it? Let's find out. So in my opinion, I think The Last of Us Part 2 deserves a platit rating, as this is a game that you should aim to get the platinum in, in my opinion. If you've never platinumed a game before, then I think this is a very good one to start out with, as it can give you a good idea of what to expect from trophies, namely a load of collectibles, and it's a fairly easy one and you can adjust all the difficulty options and accessibility options to make it a more enjoyable experience for you to get all these trophies in. So it's a very nice one for you to start out with, and it's not as mind-numbingly easy and straightforward as like a Telltale game when all you have to do is platinum it so it will get you to kind of work towards the platinum and give you a nice feeling of what to expect when you go for other games however if you've also got loads of platinums yourself then this is quite a dull one to go for but i would still say go for it even if it is collectible heavy with the 200 plus collectibles that you need to get the list isn't as hard or as challenging as the first game but it's still a good platinum to have because I don't think it looks as bad as say a Telltale game on your list so I still think even the most hardcore of trophy owners should go for this game as they're probably going to buy this game anyway because it's The Last of Us 2 and everyone wants to play this game so for that reason I think it does deserve a platit rating even if the list is a bit dull and unimaginative it's still a fun game to play so what are you waiting for go and get that platinum trophy thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time